Hey class, um, welcome to the fifth lecture. Um, today, uh, the lecture is either going to be short, like we're either going to have a short video or a series of videos. So, um, I mean, that's fine in a way that we're actually kind of going fast in the course. So it's okay if we take this a little slower. All right, so today what we're going to do is we're going to finish off um, worksheet 14. So last time we looked at questions um, one, two, and three. And today what we're going to do is we're going to look at, um, starting from page two, we're going to look at questions one all the way to question seven. All right, so the prelim of the questions is Ben and Amanda are going to race. Suppose they race at the same speeds they had in training. The race course is 75 miles long and Amanda is going to start one hour after Ben. All right, so um, some preliminary facts that we knew from last time is, okay, so work, I'm just gonna write down worksheet 14. All right, so some of the facts that we knew from last time was um, we had Ben and Amanda who were um, traveling at a constant speed. And last time we calculated that Ben was traveling at 15 miles per hour and Amanda was traveling at 25 miles per hour. All right, so that's basically all we need to know to um, solve the questions below. So let's look at question one, draw a graph of the situation. Um, what variable should go on which axis and uh, yeah, next to just instructions. All right, so here's the convention. Um, Mathematically, it doesn't really matter whether um, the miles variable go on the y-axis or the x-axis. But the convention is that the number of miles go on the y-axis and time goes on the x-axis. Um, the reason will become clearer um, once we solve these problems. All right, so time in hour. So this is gonna be distance in miles. <clears throat> All right, so let's do Ben's first. So let's say time zero or the zeroth hour is when Ben starts. So things are gonna get easier. Okay, so <coughs> um, if Ben starts at the zeroth hour, and if it's if his speed is fifteen miles per hour, then oh, I kind of need more. But... All right, so after an hour, Ben's Ben would have traveled fifteen miles. Ben would have traveled. Um, okay, the scales are very. Yeah. Um, the measurements are very not to scale, but anyways, 15, 30. Uh, I don't know if this was a good divvy up. Um, 30, 45, and 60. All right, so after an hour, Ben would have traveled 15 miles. And after two hours, Ben would have traveled 30. And then you get the pattern. So we're going to get something like... This the reason why it doesn't quite look like a line is because my scales are my scales are all over the place, um, but yeah, this is kind of like what Ben's graph is gonna look like. So we're gonna have a straight line, um, where the slope here is gonna be fifty miles for the rise and one hour for the run. So um, if you remember, the equation or like the formula for the slope is rise over run. So it's going to be rise over run. So it's going to be 15 over one. All right, let's look at Amanda's case. Um, for Amanda, we know that Amanda's going to start one hour after Ben. So Amanda's going to start here. So Amanda's still going to be um, at the zero with mile mark after one hour. And then this is when she starts. And then after two hours, 
um, she would have traveled 25 miles because she's traveling at 25 miles per hour. So, uh, so she would be somewhere around here. And then um, after three hours, she would have traveled um, 50 miles because um, 25 miles per hour, two hours. So that would make Amanda um, be at 50 miles. So she's going to be at um, somewhere around here. And then after fourth hour, um, she is she would have reached 75 miles. So the graph looks somewhat like this. Again, it doesn't quite look like a line because my scales are all over the place. All right. So we have a graph, kind of like linear-ish. <coughs> All right, so for question B, um, we knew that two quantities are in a linear relationship if the equation is somewhat like y equals mx plus b. Uh, why are your graphs lines above? Um, to explain, I guess, it's just um, a one-liner. It's basically uh, the speed is constant, as in like every um, increment of an hour, we are increasing the number of miles constant, like, you know, at a constant rate. So um, for Amanda, okay, this is going to be Amanda. For Amanda, every hour, um, she travels 25 miles. No matter which point you choose, after an hour, she would have traveled 25 extra miles. And for Ben, um, no matter no matter which point you choose along the race, um, an hour afterwards, he would have traveled 15 miles. So that's why we know that um, the graphs are going to be lines. For um, Jinx, uh, this is from the previous video, but for Jinx, um, we can see that, uh, let me quickly write it down. So for Jing, 15 minutes to 45 minutes is 16 to 27. So uh, Jing traveled 11, 11 miles and then to one hour, um, oops, it, the plus 11 should be here. And then in 15 minutes, um, Jing traveled three miles. And this is 15 minutes, and this is 30 minutes. So if he travels three miles in 15 minutes, if um, Jing was traveling at a constant speed, or if the relationship between um, the number of miles and time was linear, then when he travels 30 minutes, he should have traveled six miles, but instead he travels 11. So his graph is gonna look somewhat like this. It's gonna look somewhat like, um, in the first 30 minutes, um, he travels like, let's say 15, 45, one hour is gonna be 60th minute. So between these two, he's gonna have 16, miles and then jumps up to 27 but then for 60 um he only travels to 30. so there's gonna have to there's gonna be this bend in the graph so from this we can see that the um, graph is not going to be linear so this was question one and this is question two all right question three um, use your graph to decide if Amanda will catch up with Ben by the end of the race. If so, when and where? All right, so um, we need to use the graph for this. For the um, looking at the graph, we can see that the two lines actually cross. And that is when Amanda catches up with Ben. So for this whole time, Amanda was behind Ben, and then they get closer and closer, and at this point, they meet. And then after this point, Amanda actually um, goes forward, like she goes much faster than men. And then, um, yeah, she goes ahead, and then she finishes the race much earlier than Ben. So this is the point where um, they meet, which is like when, when they intersect, um, and when and where. Okay, so for when, we need to look at time. Uh, again, this graph is not to scale, so, um, yeah, please bear with this graph.
yeah, please understand that my answer might be rather inaccurate. Um, but it seems somewhat like 2.3 hours, 2.4 hours. Um, I'm just going to go with 2.3. So for the question of when, it's going to be 2.3 hours. And regarding the question of miles, um, let's see. It's going to be somewhat like 34, 34 miles ish. Yeah. I mean, um, you can use your graph and see where they meet. Um, in fact, it's actually possible to make it, um, make an accurate calculation of where this is going to be. But, um, for this one, I'm just going to use the graph. All right. So question four. Using the graph, find out when each person will finish the race. Oh, okay. That is, that is not too hard, fortunately. Okay. So the question says the race is going to be 75 miles long. So this is when the race finishes. And we know that um, at which time Amanda's going to reach the 75 miles. Looking at the graph, um, we know that it's going to be the fourth hour mark. So find out when each person will finish the race. Um, for Amanda, it's when T, I'm just going to say T for time, when T equals four. And for Ben, it's when T equals, um, for Ben, we can see that that is when T equals five. So Amanda's going to uh, finish the race in four hours. Technically, it's three hours because um, she gave Ben the advantage of an hour. Um, and then Ben is going to finish um, in five hours. All right, so that was question four. Um, hopefully, I'm not going a little too fast, but then even if I am, you can always pause the video. All right, question five. Find algebraic equations describing rules for the two bytes that tells their distance in the race at a given time. Okay, um, let's try to draw the graph again. Uh, and then this is kind of like what Ben's looks like. 75, 5, and then this is where approximately where 4 is, and then this is when she's going to finish. And then this is 1, 2, 3, oh god, my scales are totally off again. My, yep, yeah, my scales are totally off. Uh, anyways. Amanda. All right. Um, now we need to find the algebraic equations. Okay, so for algebraic equations, um, let's look at Ben's first. We know that the linear um, equation is going to be y equals mx plus b. And um, I don't know if you realized from the section of arithmetic progression, but the M actually represents a common difference, or in this case, it's going to be the slope. And what does slope represent in this case? So for Ben, let's look at the slope. The slope is going to be um, the rise of a run. So let's, okay. So in an hour, we know that Ben travels 15 miles. So the slope is going to be rise, which is 15, over run, which is hour, which is technically 15 miles per hour. So we can see that the slope actually represents the speed. So in this specific case, M represents the speed. And then similar to arithmetic progression, B is the number we get for y when x equals 0. So when we substitute x equals 0, we get y equals b. So b is going to be what we call a y-intercept. Because y-intercept is um, the point on the y-axis, which is when x is equal to 0. So specifically for Ben's case, the equation is going to be y equals m, which is the slope, or the speed in this case, and Ben's speed is 15, <coughs> x, plus b is going to be the y-intercept. Where does um, where does Ben's line intersect on the y-axis? We can see that it's actually um, the 0th mark. 
or yeah, the, the zero with mile mark. So we know that B is actually going to be zero. So plus zero doesn't really do anything. So the equation for Ben is actually Y equals 15 X. All right, for Amanda, it's going to be a little different. Oh, I'm sorry about the earthquake. Y equals MX plus B. Okay, so M is going to be the speed. The speed of Amanda is what? 25 miles per hour plus the Y intercept. It's kind of hard to see where um, the Amanda line intersects the Y axis. But then if we expand this graph a little further then we know that every hour Amanda travels 25 miles so um, if we extend this line because technically the graph of Amanda is like there's a bend here right there's a bend here but then if we were to assume that it was actually a line all along then this is the point where um, Amanda Amanda's line intersects y-axis and every hour we know that Amanda travels 25 miles so if we were to time travel backwards by an hour we know that Amanda would go backwards by 25 miles so this point is actually negative 25 so b in this case is going to be minus 25 so the equation for Amanda is 25 x minus 25 Okay, so now that we know these equations, we can actually go back and solve some of the previous problems. <coughs> and the question I want to look at is, use your graph to decide if Amanda will catch up with Ben by the end of the race. Oh, no, 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 sorry, not that one. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, just this one. Uh, the one where Amanda catches up with Ben and when and where, basically. So we know that they intersect. Now... The question is where that intersection point is. Okay, and in order to do that, when they intersect, they're going to have exactly the same x values and y values, right? So we know that they're going to have exactly the same y values, which means 15x, which we know is y for Ben, is going to be the same y for Amanda. So that's going to be 25x minus 25. So we get 15x equals 25x minus 25. And all we need to do is just solve for x. And if we solve for x, we can see that x equals 2.5, which is, well, kind of similar to what we got, uh, 2 point, yeah, which is kind of similar to what we got here. But then also it's a proof that my scale was like awfully off. Yep, so we can see that Amanda and Ben are actually going to meet 2.5 hours after the race started. And once we know x, how do we find y? How do we find at which location in the race are they going to meet? Well, for Ben, we know that y equals 15, uh, 15 times x. So we can just substitute that in. So it's going to be y equals 15x, which is 15 times 2.5 times. It doesn't matter which equation you choose because we know, we already know that, um, no matter which equation we choose, if we substitute x, we're going to get exactly the same y. So y equals 15 times um, 2.5, which I believe is um, 30... 37.5 miles. So 37.5 miles in the race which is coincidentally exactly halfway through the race, um, <coughs> Ben and Amanda would have met. And after that point, Amanda actually catches up with Ben and actually goes uh, ahead. Sweet. So that was question five, which kind of shows how convenient using the equation is and how um, accurate our calculations are going to get if we use equations instead of graphs. Because for graphs, as you can see, the scales can be pretty off. So, all right, question six. What are the X and Y intercepts for each biker in this problem? Uh, okay, let's see. 
Yeah, let me quickly do this. Okay, so the x and the y intercepts, um, for Ben, we can see that the x intercept is actually zero. Whoops. When um, for Ben, it's gonna be zero hours. And then for, Aman um, for Amanda, we can see that it's one hour, Amanda. Maybe you would have guessed, but what these represent um, is basically when they started the race. So we know that Ben started as soon as, um, you know, I don't know, like if someone said go or someone said start, that's when Ben started. And Amanda started one hour after Ben started. So that's what the x-intercepts represent, x-intercepts. And for the y-intercepts, the y-intercept for Ben was zero, which is kind of like um, the location he starts his race. And then for Amanda is negative 25. Hmm, what does it mean for Amanda to have a y-intercept of negative 25 miles? I guess my interpretation is if Amanda were to start at exactly the same time as Ben, then in order to have this line, Amanda should have started 25 miles before Ben so that after an hour, we actually do get the line that we want for Amanda. And then, um, you know, like she starts 25 miles behind and then as we go after an hour, she gets to where Ben started. So that's kind of what the y-intercepts mean. So for Ben, we know that it's zero. For Amanda, it's negative 25. Intercept. And for x-intercept, it represents time uh, started. And for y-intercepts, it's kind of like the location um, where the race started. In Amanda's case, um, remember that the interpretation is kind of like, if Amanda were to start at the zero with time or the zero with hour, um, to get exactly the same effect, she would have started, or she should have started 25 miles behind Ben. So that after an hour, she actually reaches where um, Ben started the race. All right, and just to finish up, uh, question seven. What is the slope for each biker in this problem? We already talked about it. It's actually speed. All right, so that concludes today's lecture. Um, and homework's going to be up on Canvas once uh, this video is released, uh, hopefully. So I will see you next week.